I didn't think that I'd be here in Iceland this week. This was the last place I fished two years ago. And this is the first place I'm returning, but I'm returning not as the same person. I'm forever changed by this experience. I'm not sure how it's all going to play out. I'm, I'm not the same person that I was two years ago. How could you be? I hadn't been well for a number of years before I came to Iceland the last time. But when I got home from that trip, my health began to seriously deteriorate. As my condition worsened, I didn't know if I was going to live, let alone go fishing again. Fortunately, I pulled through. I'm still not 100%, but I'm finally able to go back out on the river. Struggling with a life-threatening disease didn't just affect my physical ability to fish. It has fundamentally changed my views of the sport of fishing and of myself as an angler. I grew up on the water in Nova Scotia. My formative years were there. And my brother and I would build rafts and play Tom Sawyer and paddle up and down the river. And we discovered another world on, on that body of water. I fell in love with fishing the first time I put a line in the water and pulled out a fish. My father would take my brothers on fishing trips, but he would never take me. I always wanted to go, and he would say, no, it's not for the girls. You know, it's difficult if you have to use the washroom. The boys are gonna be skinny dipping, and it's just not appropriate. It's not a place for a girl. It's not what girls do. Back then, I didn't think it was possible for a girl to be a professional angler. So I didn't even say it out loud. It was just my young girl's dream. And so I did other things, but I, I kept fishing. And when I turned 30, I sold my business. And I said out loud, I want to be a fishing guide. At the time, there were only two female certified casting instructors in Canada. I became the third. Shortly after that, I started producing a fishing show. What a catch. The award-winning show went on to be internationally distributed. There weren't a lot of women on TV fishing and hunting. And I thought it was necessary to show the next generation that, yes, women are fishing and hunting. I went through an evolution as an angler. At first, like most fishermen, oh, I wanted to catch a lot of fish. You're learning every time you there catch a fish because every fish that you ah. catch is, a, is different, a different experience. Jump. Uh-oh. No two days are ever the same. No two fish are ever the same. Boy, I learned that I learned that trick on the east on um, the west coast of Canada. Salmon fishing. <laughs> Stick your rod in the water or kiss your rod goodbye. Then I wanted to challenge myself. I wanted to see what a fish would take. I remember taking an earplug from a plane, putting googly eyes on it and a feather tail, and catching trout in Argentina. I got the fish! And then, I wanted to catch the trophy fish. The one that would make people sit up and take notice. There's a nice fish. <laughs> all right, let's put him back in. That's what my TV show was all about. I traveled all over the world in search of the most exotic game fish. So I would travel to these destinations just to try to get this world record. So it wouldn't matter if I didn't catch a fish for a week. When I caught one, it better be Jesus big. But after a while, I began to enjoy it less and less. I started to question what I was doing.
I've always been concerned about how we as fishermen treat fish. Even though I was practicing proper catch and release techniques, I wondered if I was having a negative effect on the fish. So when I first started fishing, we were told unequivocally that fish didn't feel pain. I wasn't convinced. Whether we call it pain or not, there's something going on there. They definitely don't appreciate being hooked. I may know I'm going to release the fish, but the fish doesn't know it. As far as it's concerned, it's fighting for its life. Now as time has gone by, there is more science to understand that there is a lot more going on with the fish. It's been proven that fish are much closer neurologically to higher primates than we previously thought. A group of prominent neuroscientists recently signed a proclamation declaring that human and animal consciousness, including fish, are very similar. Researchers also discovered that catch and release doesn't always have a happy ending. The fish can end up dying for a number of reasons. The stress from the fight can change its body chemistry with fatal results. An injury when it's hooked may make it vulnerable to predators or prevent it from feeding properly. So I started being at odds with myself. I was having trouble looking in the mirror. I was conflicted. I wanted the trophy picture, but a voice inside me was telling me that it wasn't right to cause this fish to suffer. When I went to Iceland the last time, the war between my ego and my conscience was heating up. When I got back home, I discovered I had another war on my hands. When I returned from the last trip to Iceland, my condition began to rapidly deteriorate. I crashed and had to take to my bed. My symptoms first showed up five years earlier on a fishing trip in British Columbia. I had a fever and I felt like I had the flu. And so I went to the hospital. The doctor said I had shingles. He said I'd be better in a few weeks. But I didn't get any better. I went from specialist to specialist it took five years before the doctors were able to connect the dots. I was diagnosed with Lyme disease and co-infections, a potentially life-threatening infectious disease caused by bug bites. Growing up, I was told not to worry about bugs, that they were more of a nuisance than a problem. Today, I know that they are nature's dirty needles. It had been left untreated. A simple round of four to six weeks of antibiotics would have prevented and disseminated disease. Instead, it had ended up in my brain and left me with the symptoms of an Alzheimer's patient. I had trouble with speech. My memory was a disaster. I couldn't drive, couldn't read, um, couldn't work. My life energy was leaving me and I thought I was dying. I couldn't seem to get any help in Canada. I ended up traveling to California and I went to a Lyme clinic and they put me on antibiotics. I was put on a course of heavy duty IV antibiotics. The doctor said that I would be in treatment for years with no guarantee that I would ever be cured. Hooked up to a pole for as much as six hours a day is not a life. I spent a lot of time in bed wondering if I would ever get well. Living with a life-threatening disease has profoundly affected me emotionally as well as physically. Before being bitten by bugs, I was G.I. Jane. I would go off on these adventures. I was an explorer. I was an adventurer. I was a sports person. No challenge was too big. I was more at home in the outdoors. I, I wasn't afraid of anything. I wasn't afraid of bugs. I wasn't afraid of really anything. I was fearless and I thought I would live forever. And then 
I lost my health and I realized that that's your greatest commodity, that is your most precious jewel. When that's taken from you, you have nothing and you know a darkness like no other darkness. It's a hole, it's a, it's a helplessness, it's a, it's a, it's a sadness. For the first time in my life, I was forced to confront my own mortality. It's made me more aware of the pain and suffering in the world. And that has changed the way I think about fishing. And I had lots of time to lie in bed and think about those fishing trips that I had taken and dream about remember when. Because I took time to reflect, I realized that I didn't like what I was becoming. I had forgotten what I loved about fishing and why I was fishing. Big hair, hey, let's see the thumbs up. Cool. I couldn't continue fishing the way that I was. It wasn't working for me anymore. When my health improved enough that I was able to go fishing again, I knew I had to change the way I fished. I had, in the past, started fishing without a hook. I would bend the hooks back and I'd feel the take. Because after all, the thrill for me was in discovering what would elicit a strike and the beauty of putting the line where I wanted to put it and seeing the fish come for the fly and feeling that handshake with the fish, feeling that pull. That was a salmon. Did you see his whole back? That was a light bulb moment. I thought, okay, well, it's not actually holding the, f you know, bringing the fish in that's that I get my buzz. And God knows I don't need another trophy picture of an Atlantic salmon. I decided that I wouldn't hook any fish when I was in Iceland. So I'm not saying that it's wrong to catch a fish and take a picture. I'm saying for me, at this point in my journey, I don't feel as good about it because I know more. I'd experimented with hookless fishing before, but I'd never done it for the entire trip. I didn't know how it would feel, and I knew that I wouldn't find out until I actually tried it. The fact that I was able to make this trip at all is what this trip to Iceland is all about for me. This trip to Iceland this week is a triumph. It is a true triumph of spirit. It is my dogged determination to get well. It's, it's everything that I've done that has been uncomfortable and painful difficult to regain my health so that I could be here in Iceland and walk a salmon river that my most loved fish the Atlantic salmon you know my god I'm going to live in the moment and just be grateful an attitude of gratitude that's my my new reality that's what it is. So it's really special, and it's my birthday. And it's your birthday. Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> so I'm on a salmon river with my sweetie. Yeah. So I'm really excited to be here, but there is a little hitch, and yeah. it's not the hitch we're going to no, fish. Not that one. <laughs> it's another one. <laughs> the, the problem I have is because I've known true suffering now, I'm having a problem getting my head around hooking a fish and causing the fish well whatever however you want to frame it it's not a good time for the fish so this disease has changed me right yeah. and I'm still trying to figure out the new me so what I'm proposing is that we cut the bend of the hook off I've fished before without the hook 
just with the fly. And um, I enjoy it equally. I don't need to hook every fish in the pool. I, I just need to feel that pull. So I know that's going to seem extremely strange, uh, talking to an Icelander and an avid fisherman, and, and for you, Lou, because yeah, I know yeah, no, you're a I numbers know. guy. Yeah, no, no. But I've I talked like a lot about this, so it probably yeah. doesn't come as a surprise, right? Yeah, I know. But it is, it's something you have to come to your own conclusions on, that's for sure. For me, I like the fish on long enough just to have a little bit of a bite and then he can go. More than just the rise. I know that I can land them. You know, I've landed sailfish on a fly. I can't hurt hurt. Mm. Um, I can't interfere with a fish that I love so deeply. I mean, I love the Atlantic salmon as if it were a pet. Um, I don't see them as food. I see them as a living, breathing animal and I'm trying to save them. I don't want to, I don't want to interfere with them and, I, and I'm okay with the take. I thought what we could do is loosen the drag off so much and instead of setting the hook, I'll just let the fish take the line. Mm -hmm. so. Let's go do it. Okay. So I told this guide that this is what I was going to be doing and he didn't laugh and then he said, oh, that intrigues me. Tell me more. Cool. The satisfaction for me comes from casting the line and placing it in the spot that will elicit the strike. And then watching the water change color and time slowing down as the water erupts and the fish takes the fly and then feeling the line go tight. I mean, that for me is, that, that's everything. Ugh. There's one way to change your fly, right? Fishing without a hook was wonderful. I got to experience everything I love about fishing without causing the fish distress. Harassing the what well, the the fish this morning? Okay, like a little bit shorter. Oh, a little bit shorter. Oh, a little bit shorter. <coughs> okay, Lou told me longer. You told me shorter. <laughs> the the two of you can just go pound sand. Long. No, he said short. No shorter line. No, he said shorter strip. Oh, shorter line. Shorter line. Oh, no. good grief. <laughs> Peanut gallery. All right. I might go on strike. Fish took the rod bent. I was, I felt very gratified and um, I thought this is gonna work and that I can fish without a hook, catch fish, and still get a good buzz from it. So I, I was going back to the lodge and I was so excited. I had a, a wonderful day, felt the magic. But as I was driving back and we had to drive all the way around the river to get to the lodge, because the lodge is on the other side of the river. As we drove, I became increasingly quiet because I realized that as we got closer to the lodge, I was gonna have to tell the other sports that I hadn't actually landed a fish. I knew that the first thing people would ask when I got back to the lodge was, how many fish did you catch? And legitimately, I couldn't say to them that I had caught fish because the definition of catching fish for Atlantic salmon is you touch the leader when it's at your feet or you tail the fish or touch the fish. And, uh, you know, clearly I, I had not done that. So I realized that all the joy that I had had that during the day was taken away in that moment because again, I was more worried about what these other fishermen, about them validating my experience. I felt disappointed in the day. 
I felt more than disappointed in my day. I felt inadequate. I felt angry. I felt frustrated. I was also disappointed in myself. Instead of being happy with my own experience, I was worried that they would judge me. But this is something that I realize I've put on myself. And, but I think that when I'm sitting at the table, I'm worried that they're not gonna see me for, for who I am. They're not going to know, how could they? The hours I've spent on the river, the journey that I've taken, the learning that has taken place, the wealth of information that I have. And I wanted them to know that I have evolved. This is an exciting evolution that has happened over a period of 20 years. I didn't even tell people that I was fishing without a hook because I thought they would laugh at me. I'm still just trying to get comfortable in this new skin. I'm not sure, I'm not sure what I need to do to get to where I need to be. Being a fisherman is the core of my identity. It's how I define myself. It's how others define me. Am I still a fisherman if I'm not landing fish? That is what I have to figure out. I need to be brave. It, it's it's going to be a bumpy road.